Now, North Korea has confirmed it's tested its biggest intercontinental ballistic missile. Uh, the dictator, North uh, Korean leader Kim Jong-un, was present during the launch and was pictured in rather bizarre Hollywood fashion, wearing sunglasses and walking slowly with his army generals in front of the new missile in a very weird kind of uh, promotional video there. Uh, the new type of ballistic missile is reportedly the biggest in North Korea to date and marks an end to a self-imposed ban on long-range testing, which has been in place since 2017. Joining me now to discuss what's going on there is the career expert, Professor Robert Kelly. Uh, thank you very much for joining us, Robert Kelly. Um, Everybody has been so distracted by the awful events in Ukraine uh, that not a lot of attention was given to this over recent months. But the reality is that North Korea has restarted its testing program. What is the significance of that? And, and what about the timing? Yeah, so I think the North Koreans took a couple of years off. They, they paused in 2018. Um, because Donald Trump met Kim Jong-un and maybe there might have been some movement, there might have been some kind of deal. And I think that was a North Korean way of encouraging Trump to come to the table. But Trump is long gone. Those negotiations didn't really go anywhere. Biden, the current president, is more hawkish on North Korea than Trump was. And the new South Korean president or the incoming president, the guy who just got elected a couple of weeks ago, will be more hawkish as well than the current South Korean president, right? So, I mean, the, the, the tables are turning against North Korea, and I think um, they're going back to the to the testing that they have done in the past. I'm not sure if the timing is particularly that important. I mean, sort of, it's possible that maybe they're sort of like using the distraction of Ukraine in order to pull this off. But I think generally the, the, the longer term framing is that, uh, you know, they want to build these weapons so they can strike the United States and keep the Americans, you know, sort of off balance if there were ever a conflict or something like that. I mean, that's sort of the point of deterrence. And um, they're going to keep on testing and they've got to keep on making sure the weapons work and build larger ones. And so I'm not really sure that it's actually sort of tied to anything particular in the last few weeks. So that's interesting. I mean, for as long as anyone can remember, this is what the North Korean regime does. Um, and I would understand if people are a bit sort of shrug, shrug about it. You know, North Korea is always testing these missiles. How scared do you think people need to be about it? I mean, this is not a, a nothing situation, is it? Yeah, that's right. I don't think that. So I don't think the North Koreans are rational, right? I mean, that they're not ISIS and they're not Al Qaeda. I think that's sort of the most important place to start, right? I mean, if if Osama bin Laden had a nuclear weapon, who I mean, knows what he would do? The Kims ultimately want to survive. Um, I think they'd like, maybe ideally, to sort of bully South Korea into some kind of federation or something. But really, I think the Kims want to survive more than anything else, and that's what these things are really designed to do. They're designed to prevent a repeat of 2017. You may remember with Donald Trump threatened fire and fury in the North Koreans can keep that from ever really happening again by developing these weapons. I mean, that's really the point is to say, look, we can strike the continental United States, and so you should never strike us. Um, I don't actually think the North Koreans intend to use them for offense. I don't think they intend to sell them to terrorists. Um, it's a great and terrible threat that they have them, but I don't actually think that they're um, irrational or unstable or going to use them randomly. You mentioned President Trump there and, of course, that extraordinarily high profile um, series of meetings with Kim Jong-un some years ago, uh, which, as you said, didn't really come to much. But nonetheless, uh, this testing program did go quiet for a bit. Do you think uh, if President Trump was still in power, um, Kim Jong-un would be would be trying this stuff right now? I think so, because the Trump diplomatic initiative basically collapsed at the end of 2019. Um, Donald Trump met Kim Jong-un three times. The last time was in the summer of 2019. And then um, the um, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo went to Pyongyang. And then things basically sort of fell apart. And Trump really sort of gave up on it by 2020 when he was running for re-election. You may remember the idea was that a breakthrough with North Korea was supposed to be a sort of big foreign policy success he could market in the election. And that didn't really happen. And he basically gave up on it. So I think, yeah, I think the North Koreans would probably be be doing this. Um, I, there was, I think there was a window for about maybe six months to nine months when, when President Trump might have really made a, a breakthrough. But ultimately, the, the, the Americans and the North Koreans were too far apart. The, the offers the two made to each other were so far apart. They were so incompatible that um, there was no way to, uh, to really sort of broker a deal. We should have started smaller instead of going for a, a sort of um, big and just deal. 
Just, just very quickly, you're a, a professor of international relations theory. Um, I, I just wonder whether there's any way one would ever see the kind of invasion on the North Korean side to South Korea that we've seen uh, Russia do to Ukraine. Are there any parallels there? North Korea obviously has an enormous army compared to South Korea's resources. Whether it's any good is another question. Yeah, that's right. That, that's actually that's actually a fantastic question. And yes, I do think there is. There's actually a very direct parallel. Yeah, the, the Russians are quite cleverly leveraging their nuclear weapons to keep NATO from intervening in Ukraine, right? I mean, basically, they're sort of like keeping us out in order to prosecute their conflict by using nuclear weapons to keep us back, right? And allow basically sort of forcing us only to sort of provide limited assistance we can't do in the no fly zone, for example. And the possibility is that the North Koreans are thinking they can do yeah. anything. Right. They can keep the Americans at bay and then, Thank you. you know, have their way with. Thank you. Sorry to, to hurry this to a conclusion because we're just coming to the end of the show. But thank you very much indeed to Professor Robert Kelly uh, there on North Korea.